Welcome again to another episode of Travel Like an Ocean. Thank you for all of you who have been with me from the start and any new subscribers who are with me now. Today is a very interesting conversation. It's about networking. How do you get from one cruise to the other via the use of talking to other people? This will be an interesting conversation because it gives practical advice on how you can get some tips on getting to your next vacation adventure. Let's continue this conversation after this. So you thought you'd just sit back, relax, and enjoy your Mai Tai. Well, you could do that on your vacation, but if you want to get to your next one, there are some tools you could use without much heavy lifting. What I'm gonna do here is to provide some of these avenues of networking while you're on vacation that may lead you to uh, other vacations. At a minimum, it's gonna give you some practical advice on or what you might want to do on a vacation to be able to connect with others that may help you get to your next spot. In beginning this discussion, I want to set a baseline of what I mean by networking. My definition of networking simply is contacting other people and having conversation or uh, following up with them on tips that they may have that could benefit you and your travel plans moving in the future. Let's dig into several of these. After each point, I'll have a little discussion on how those are structured. This should be very interesting. I have several categories of networking opportunities on your vacation, but these are the things that I always look out for while I'm on vacation to help me get to the next one. Get to know your fellow cruisers. It's one thing to be on vacation on a desert island of sipping on your Mai Tai. There's no problem with that. There is that social aspect of just talking to people and getting to know them and just being neighborly and listening to their stories of their travels because within those discussions and within that sharing opportunity, there are nuggets of truth that you can pull from there are stories that may benefit you in some of your travel adventures. For example, if someone says, I love Fiji, and you were thinking about going to Fiji, well, guess what? Now you have confirmation of someone else who's giving Fiji stories, and that may entice you to now book some travel to Fiji. Another great place to have discussions about travel tips in general is at poolside. And in that pool, um, typically there are people who are kind of floating around, letting their worries go off to wherever they go off to, but they're enjoying their time. It is a perfect place for you to strike up conversations with people you don't know and share stories. I did this several times in my past cruises. The next place that you may want to consider networking is during meals. Now, unless you've got a specialty dining package where you're just dining with your um, small group of people, um, there are other there are a ton of other opportunities for you to speak to people during meals. If you have open dining, uh, you're, you're usually with uh, different people not from your party that is sitting at your table. You can strike conversations with them and hear what they have to say about their past travels and you could share some of your stories and then through those conversations you can pick up some tips on how to make your next vacation better or get some inside uh, information on how to do that. Another great place that I personally like to network is during shipboard activities. So on your sea days while you're moving between ports they often have these great 
opportunities for you to play games and participate in what's going on in the ship, whether it be climbing the rock wall or doing the simulated surfer or on the bumper pool, uh, excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the bumper cars or whatever it is, whatever activity you're doing, um, there are going to be people around you. And instead of just standing there in line waiting for your turn to, to get on the activity or sitting in a room waiting for the next trivia question to be asked during one of those events, simply turn to your right, to your left, turn around, look in front of you, and there are tons of people that you can just strike up a conversation with, or they may be trying to engage you. So the other point is, you don't necessarily have to always be the one going out. If someone is trying to speak with you, be open and receive that so that you don't have to do all the work all the time. Another great one to, to consider, and I don't think a lot of people do it because they don't really have the opportunity to do it, but certainly during this cruising time where the number of people on these cruises have been significantly less is to engage with the ship's crew. Talk to the crew members. Find out, have a, a five, 10 minute conversation about who they are, where they're from, how they got there. Ask them some questions about, you know what? How can I make my cruises better? You know, I, I love this ship or I love this destination or I, I love doing what I do. Um, you're, you work for this particular uh, company. What what can you share with me to make my vacations better? You'll find more often than not that people who work for the cruise lines or for any vacation spot or vacation, um, whether it be land-based or uh, on a cruise, they are very willing to talk to you. Now, the drawback is they may not have as much time um, to dedicate to talk specifically to you for a long period of time, but you can certainly maximize your time with them and have a great conversation, but also pick their brain as to some of the networking tricks, tips that they can give you to make your vacation a lot better. One other opportunity to network is during excursions. Sometimes you're, you're traveling for a while on buses or trams or um, shuttles or boats or whatever it is while you're on your excursion. Um, and without being overly chatty, you know, listen in and ask some questions. It's, just, it's that neighborly thing that you want to do. If there's an opportunity for you to jump into a conversation, just ease your way in, introduce yourself, Mention it if you hear someone talking about, oh, yeah, I was in Asia last year, what have you. Say, ah, I'm interested in Asia. What did you like about that? How did you do that? What's the best time? Dot, dot, dot. And before you know it, you're, share, you're, you're getting information on how you could potentially be in that region just by having a simple conversation. Always look for that opportunity to um, to share information as well as participate in conversations that'll get you information about um, other opportunities. Even if you're an introvert, you shouldn't feel intimidated about casually talking to someone that's next to you. I know the definition of introvert means that you wanna avoid doing that, but if they mention something that you're very familiar with or comfortable, just simply try to fit yourself into that and share some information and then you may get some information back that will be beneficial for your travel. Now here's one that I think is gonna be really easy for most people. It's to share your own travel tips. For me, using this venue of travel like in Oching to share some of my travel hacks is one of the ways that I like to share, but you may also wanna do that on your vacation. So using the same scenario that I've given already in this, if you're having a casual conversation and someone mentions something that you can add value to that conversation by saying, yes, I've been there. Oh, oh, have you considered? Or did you know this time of year is dot, dot, dot. You're now giving your information out, which is gonna make them 
feel comfortable sharing information with you. So it's not a one-way street where you're just trying to get everything from everyone all the time. What you're doing is you're sharing your experiences, they're sharing their experiences. You guys are enjoying each other's company, enjoying your conversation, and everyone goes away with, um, with good information to help them um, along their travel journeys. I hope none of you are making this mistake of not visiting the next cruise desk, or if you're on a land-based vacation, going to the concierge to find out about other uh, properties that that company owns to, to, to frequent those. They advertise it a lot. They say, come on down. There are several benefits for doing that. Number one, the person who you'll be talking to is a travel professional and they know almost everything that you could possibly need to know about booking the next vacation for you. Not only that, it fits into this networking conversation because a lot of the times, the benefit of going to the, um, the, the cruise desk and asking them about your future vacation are the benefits you gain because you, you have reduced deposits, they have visibility of um, ships that you may not know. They were in certain regions. Again, the, the example of, you know, I wanna go to Greece. Now they can pull up all the itineraries for Greece for their line and give you that information uh, right then and there. The travel professional will have the latest, the greatest information about the destination you're trying to go to and the ship that's going there and the places that you can stay on the ship. So you can ask very clearly any questions you have and get those answers uh, right away. You don't have to guess. And the beauty of that is if you do have a travel professional at home, the travel professional on the ship works hand in hand with that person. So they will set up the, um, the, res the initial reservation on the ship. You will get the benefit of a reduced deposit. So normally if you were to book a cruise outside of the, the this opportunity at the cruise desk, you would be subject to a higher deposit, let's say $400 or, or um, $700 for a, a, a seven day cruise just to hold it. But by doing it on the ship, it's usually $100 per person in the cabin and uh, you have an opportunity later on to change that if your your change if your plans change, and then as soon as you make that reservation, you let them know who your travel professional is, and it just gets transferred over automatically. So you have the benefit of um, your reduced re reduced deposits, as well as it your travel professional getting credit for that booking. They the, the cruise lines are really good about. Uh, sharing that wealth and making sure that you feel comfortable booking your next ex excursion with them. One critical point you'll want to make is any connections you have on the cruises that you're on and, and, and the network opportunities that you had during that. I mean, these network opportunities don't just happen on the cruise. They can happen in the airport as you're going. It can happen within your Lyft or Uber ride you know they say something and you may take note one of the things that you want to make sure you do is to follow up right so opportunities where you want to get additional information feel free to ask for a phone number a card share your information maybe you bring some cards with you they're so easy to make and it's about 10 bucks to get 300 cards do something fun on it doesn't have to be a formal business card Make sure you have your telephone number, who you are, a quick message, you know, maybe a blank space you can write on there where it was, you know, uh, you drove me to the airport or met you on the cruise or whatever it is and have that ready to be able to hand out. I know in some places it'll be hard to do that, like the pool. You don't want to walk around with business cards at the pool. So you'll have to be more creative there. I bring my, my iPhone with me too to the pool. I don't bring it in the water, but I bring it with me to the pool and it's over with my personal stuff. And usually if I meet someone, and this happened my last cruise, I met someone, we struck up a conversation. They had some great advice on uh, how to save significantly on my next cruise. 
and so I simply said, you mind if I follow up with you after the cruise and, and give you a call to find out more information? They, they could have said yes or no. In this case, they felt very comfortable. They gave me their name. I put it right in my phone. And now I have a connection that I could use. I now have this resource that I can tap to get information on networking on later cruises. So it's a great resource. Please remember this point. One of the things you can do prior to going on your cruise or any land-based vacation, I gotta keep saying that because um, although I love cruising, the, these tips and tricks also work for land-based vacations. And I do enjoy land-based vacations. I just love cruising, so I do a lot of cruising. But what I tell you applies across the board trying to provide information for anyone to use in their situation where they think is relevant. One way you can network is to talk to family and friends prior to going on your next vacation. They may have some advice or they have ideas on where they've been and the types of things they've done to make their vacations great. You can network and talk to them and pull that information from them and, and apply it to your own situation so that you now have that potential resource and those opportunities to make your vacation better. So remember, friends and family are a great source to network with and they have great information that you may want to use. A no-brainer, I think, is you just contact your travel professional. They have years and years and years of knowledge of what's going on in the particular mode of vacation that you want to be in, whether it be a cruise or land-based. Just reach out to them, ask them questions. Again, I always want to emphasize this. Do not use them for just popcorning ideas, right? Go to them and ask them specific questions. I keep reminding folks that it's not their responsibility to do all that preliminary work of planning your cruise or um, um, answering fundamental questions. Their job is to, after you've made that decision, to then help you enhance that decision and to actually book these things. So it's a fine line. You know, you have to have enough of the work, back, uh, background work done for them to be able to help you but you don't want to just go to them cold and have to have them uh, hand walk you through all of these decisions. And the reason is simple. They literally have scores and scores of clients that also have to do this vacation planning. Um, and they just couldn't spend the time with each of those families, you know, trying to hold their hand through this process. So, they are a good source to network with, but you got to be very respectful of their time because they have to make calls, they have to um, do deposits, they have to keep these relationships. They, they're the ones waiting on the phone on hold to get additional information for you with the, the cruise lines. They really can't spend uh, a ton of time hand walking you through this. So as long as you have your um, mindset on a vacation type, and you know the basics, you bring that to them and then they'll help enhance that. Another source that most people are very comfortable with is using their social media. Simply look online, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, look at these pictures. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fun things being posted. You can get a ton of information in those sources. Um, one thing I <laughs> caution you about, especially with social media, is don't be envious of the places you see. Use those images to inspire you as to how can you become a part of that or similar to that, right? If I'm looking at pictures of Hawaii and the closest I can get to it is the Mexican Riviera, well, I'm gonna have a Hawaiian type vacation in the Mexican Riviera. Or, you know, um, yeah, the point is simple. Don't envy the pictures you're seeing, but be inspired by the pictures you're seeing and see how you can incorporate that into your vacation planning and make that a reality. That's basically the networking with your social media. Just be aware of what you're looking at and how you could make that a part of your vacation planning. My final tip for you 
is to act on any of the advice from the aforementioned categories that I spoke about. One thing is to have knowledge. The other thing is to act on that knowledge. Don't hesitate, get it done, and plan your next great, awesome vacation. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. I look forward to other topics in the future. If you've really enjoyed the information I've been giving to you all along, please consider clicking on that like, subscribe, and ringing that bell to support my channel. It costs you nothing and it means the world and it helps my analytics. And I really want to share this information with others. Another way you can help me out if you'd like, is to just forward my links. So if you found any one of my videos particularly in, uh, interesting, just go ahead and forward that along and then those folks would have an opportunity to like and subscribe. Well, that's it for now. I really appreciate you hanging in there with me. And until next time, Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.